All right, so I have jury duty in a few hours, so that's fun. Oh, geez, my monitor is really loud. Let me turn that down just a tad. Um, anyway, before that, I want to talk about this. Uh, this is the one that I was referring to last time that I said I was going to record today. I didn't actually end up recording it that day, but I'm recording this on the day that I'm planning to upload that one. I haven't even uploaded that one yet. Anyway, uh, I was inspired to do this one. So, so at work, I work at a casino, and we have a giant TV screen on the main floor, right? Uh, and there are a bunch of TVs off on the secondary gaming floor, the non-smoking area. But in, on the main floor, we have a giant TV above the pit, above where the table games are, right? And there was, uh, they were talking about, or there was an add-on for a movie about the Arn Johnson case, Arnie. Arnie Cheyenne Johnson, I think. It's either Arnie or Arn. I'm going to say Arnie because that makes more sense. Um, if you don't know, The Conjuring 2 was based on this court case, I think. I haven't seen it, so I hadn't actually heard about it. Um, but there is this new movie, quote-unquote, based on a true story or whatever that's coming out. I don't know what the movie is. I don't care. <laughs> I just saw there's this court case where this guy <clears throat> uh, was claimed innocence due to demonic possession. So I want to talk about some other demonic possessions that I have experienced. Um, so, uh, and then I'll talk about the Arnie Johnson case because that's it's actually kind of interesting. Um, so my experiences with demonic possessions are not limited, but I guess they're not strictly, I, I want to talk about demon experiences in general. The first one that ever happened that I can think of was when I was seven years old. I was in second grade, and I was living in Rockaway, Oregon. Rockaway is a great little town. Anyway, we lived in a, in a house there for like half a year because uh, we got... Actually, I don't know. My parents had found the house there, but we ended up moving to Telemuk for whatever reason. And we lived there for a few years, but when I lived in Rockaway for that half a year... Uh, we always thought the house was haunted or possessed or whatever. And this is kind of what got my parents set off into Christianity, um, at least a little bit. They, they ended up calling a priest over to exorcise the house, and he put oil above the doors and whatever, all that stuff. Um, the demonic experiences were all sleep paralysis, at least the ones I can remember. When I was, or I, I was laying down on my bed facing the door on my back, and when I was falling asleep, I entered sleep paralysis. I didn't realize it was sleep paralysis because I thought I could move. I was just, I thought I was just too scared to move. Um, I saw this, it looked like my brother walking up to my bed and he was looking down at me. It was really creepy. And I tried to tell him to go to bed, but I couldn't talk because of sleep paralysis. Again, I thought it was just because I was too scared. Um, and then it turned into, it's, so the chupacabra is a like raccoon looking thing, right? Like a hairless raccoon looking thing. But it turned into like a humanoid chupacabra. There was a... There was a... Like a drawing depiction of it in some show. I'll see if I can find it. But it was a humanoid thing with gray spiky fur and red eyes. It turned into that. And I... I my recollection is that I saw that on TV the next day. But I probably saw it on TV that day. And just kind of had that as my... Or, and that and that was why I saw that in my sleep paralysis. Um, and then my aunt thought there was a demon sitting on her chest when she woke up one day. But obviously, you know, sleep paralysis feels like there's pressure on your chest. Um, let's see, what else? So yeah, yeah, my parents called in an exorcist, or a priest, and got the house exercised. Blah, blah, blah. Then we ended up moving to Telemuk. Um, <clears throat> sorry, my throat's being all annoying today. Um... And there were there are a couple other things I can think of. All of them involved my dad. Um, so the first one I can think of, if you remember back to my previous video, the street preaching one, Christy was quote unquote exercised. That's why she <coughs> I'm dying. That's why she spit into the bush because she was puking out a demon or whatever. Um, my a friend of mine named Mia. Uh, ended up coming to my church. I don't remember why she ended up coming to my church. She was pretty cool. Um, she, my my dad had asked her, or my she told my dad 
I don't remember exactly what went down. Anyway, point is, she ended up saying that she did yoga. My dad was like, oh, that's, that's bad. That's like evil or whatever. Even though you're just stretching and relaxing. That's not, I don't understand that. <laughs> but I mean, there are a lot of things I don't understand within Christianity. Um, anyway, yoga's evil. So my dad's like, oh, you got the spirit of yoga in you and you got to get that out. So then she ended up puking into a garbage can after my dad yelled at, at her about the name of Jesus for a few minutes. Um, and she believed as much as I did at the time. And then there was there was one more. But I, what was it? Anyway, yeah, all all of them were just people ended up people doing some random thing that wasn't actually demonic or evil. <laughs> um, my dad praying over them and them puking or whatever. Uh, I remember there were a couple times we would go to the bathroom right after, and my dad's like, oh, they gotta get out of there somehow. <laughs> so, they, I, I feel like that's a common theme among Christianity, taking completely normal things, like going to the bathroom, even uh, in the most extreme cases, and turning it into some spiritual godly thing, or some demonic thing. Hence, you know, the satanic panic was a big thing. All that. Uh, guys, I don't know if you noticed, demons aren't real. <laughs> I mean, I thought that was pretty pretty obvious. Demons, like, they're, they're not real. <laughs> um, while it would be cool if there were, you know, demons, it would be scary, but it would be cool. Um, as cool as that would be, <laughs> you know, I don't, don't think so. <laughs> I don't know... Oh, and the puking. Um, I guess some people try to say, "Oh, but you said they puked, and there was no reason for them to puke." It's it was definitely forced. It was similar to placebo. I don't think it would specifically be placebo, but they did say they felt better after it. So maybe it did have something to do with placebo. It was definitely forced, even if it wasn't on purpose. Uh, it was in induced vomiting through like. Um, well, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't demons is what I'm trying to get at. It was a brain thing, as most of these things are. Completely natural phenomenon, like going to the bathroom or forcing yourself to vomit, <laughs> turned into, oh, that's a demon, guys. <laughs> anyway, the Arnie Johnson case, pretty interesting. Uh, might as well go into that since I've made a point with that. So this guy, Arnie Johnson, um, murdered a guy. <laughs> I don't remember who it was. But he ended up killing a guy, and he pled innocent by way of demonic possession. Um, so here, I'll, I'll read the I'll read the the summary on Wikipedia real quick. The trial of Arnie Cheyenne Johnson, also known as the Devil Made Me Do It case, is the first known court case in the United States in which the defense sought to prove innocence based upon the defendant's claim of demonic possession and denial of personal responsibility for the crime. On November 24, 1981, in Brookfield, Connecticut, Arnie Cheyenne Johnson was convicted of first-degree manslaughter for the killing of his landlord, Alan Bono. I think that's how you pronounce that. According to testimony... I can't talk. According to testimony by the Glatzel family, 11-year-old David Glatzel had allegedly played host to a demon. After witnessing a number of increasingly ominous occurrences involving David, the family, exhausted and terrified, decided to enlist the aid of self-described demonologists Ed and Lorraine Warren in a last-ditch effort to cure David. The Glatzel family, along with the Warrens, then proceeded to have multiple priests petition the church of the church to have a formal exorcism performed on David. The process continued for several days, including when, according to those present, a demon fled from the child's body and took up residence within Arnie. Several months later, Arnie killed his landlord during a heated conversation. His defense lawyer argued in court that he was possessed, but the judge ruled that such a defense could never be proven and was therefore infeasible in a court of law. Arnie was subsequently convicted, though he only served five years of a 10 to 20 year sentence. The trial attracted media attention from around the world, blah blah blah. It was in The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. So, uh, he didn't get away with it. But imagine how absurd it would be. First of all, for your, your lawyer to even begin to have that idea. If my lawyer, if I ever got a lawyer, um, which hopefully I won't ever have any legal troubles, but 
it'll happen eventually, probably. Um, if I, if my lawyer is like, oh, well, you got any demons? <laughs> I'm getting a different lawyer. <laughs> um, but also, how many people were f just fine with Arnie killing this guy, right? Because they would have had to corroborate the story of the de demon going from David to Arnie. And even if they weren't in on it, they would have had to... Re yeah, even if they did genuinely think they witnessed that, that was a completely unrelated thing, why would they have used that as an excuse for murder? Also, why is it manslaughter? What's the difference? I isn't manslaughter supposed to be accidental? Um, it was a heated conversation, so does that count as like a... Not a crime of passion, but is it manslaughter because he did it because he was angry? <laughs> That's the law is weird. Anyway, uh, good on the judge for like not taking that bait. Um, but the, it, they did say that there was. Oops, ignore the fact that I just punched my microphone. They did say that there were odd occurrences with David, um, and that's down in a paragraph later on. Uh, let's see. They asserted that. Paranormal activity began after they went to clean up the rental property they had just acquired. David recollected that an old man appeared, pushing and terrifying him. The couple initially initially thought David was using the old man as an excuse to avoid cleaning, but David informed them that the old man had vowed to harm the Glatzels if they moved in to the rental home. David's visions of the old man included the man appearing as a demonic beast who muttered Latin and threatened to steal his soul. Although the family allegedly, allegedly heard strange noises coming from the attic, no one but David ever witnessed the old man. After David experienced night terrors, exhibited strange behavior, and obtained unexplained scratches and bruises, the family called upon the services of a Catholic priest who attempted to bless the house. The terrified family concluded that the house was evil and would no longer continue to rent it. So, none of those are very strange occurrences. I mean, it's strange, but none of them can be, can't be explained away like... Um, I'm not a psychiatrist or whatever. Psychiatrist? Is that what I'm, the word I'm looking for? He, he could have easily had a mental condition that was causing the visions of the old man and the strange behavior. The unexplainable scratches and bruises were probably just him messing around in his sleep or something. Um, or doing it on purpose without realizing it. Or well, doing it on accident without realizing it, even just like bumping into a wall. Um, and night terrors are completely normal, especially if you have a mental illness that would cause visions. Um, and then it says David's visions worsened, occurring in the daytime as well. Twelve days after the original incident, the family summoned the self-proclaimed demonologist. Um, Lorraine allegedly witnessed a black mist materialize next to David, an apparent indication of a malevolent presence. So this kind of thing is very easily explained away with... Um, it's not... I keep going back to placebo because that's the only name I know for it. If you if you want to see something, then you're going to see it. It's similar to the pareidolia, but that's specifically human faces in things that aren't faces, I think. Uh, very similar to pareidolia. Uh, if you look at something and try to see something, you'll see it at least faintly, right? That's a pretty normal thing. And it goes on with other stuff like this, easily, uh, ex e easily explainable by non-demonic forces and then the guy killed it the, and then uh what's his name arnie killed bono what's his name <laughs> the landlord alan bono uh and all that and then the movies happened it's really really dumb <laughs> on arnie's part and the lawyer's part for even trying to use that as an excuse but also um you know <laughs> De demonic possessions in general, by or claimed demonic possessions by any Christian, are always bunk. They're never actually demonic possessions. I feel like that's pretty obvious. But in anything that people think is a demonic possession is easily definitely not a demonic possession. I've heard people say that mental illnesses, including depression, I've been told this specifically because I have depression. Um, they're like, oh no, it's not depression. You're possessed, or you, there's a evil spirit, spirit or depression, whatever. No. <laughs> It's not how that works. Uh, there is a chemical imbalance in my head, in my brain, that causes depression. My brother has autism. Now uh, that was claimed to be, or I don't, I think it's autism. Um, at the very least, he exhibited those symptoms, and my parents always said it was it was a 
demon. But no, that's literal physical deformities in the brain. That's not... Uh, <laughs> we're not in the Stone Ages anymore. Anyway, I think I've gotten my point across. Uh, thanks for watching this. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. I love you all, and I don't know how to end this. <laughs>